اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو دا فرسٹ لیکچر اف ویک 6 سو ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر ان دا لاسٹ ویک وی ہیو ڈسکس چیپٹر نمبر 19 دیٹ از بلک ڈیفارمیشن پروسس اینڈ ان دیٹ چیپٹر انٹل ناؤ وی ہیو ڈسکس فورجنگ آپریشن رولنگ آپریشن ان ایکسٹروژن سو وی ور لیفٹ وتھ سم پریکٹیکل پرابلم نیومیریکل پرابلم فار دا ایکسٹروژن then we will move towards the final type of the bulk deformation process that is the wire and the bar drawing so let's start with this numerical problem uh, it states a billet that is fed in the extrusion container that is 75 mm long and 25 mm in diameter is to be extruded in a direct extrusion so we have the direct extrusion here you know we have a container with some dies at certain angle and it has a billet it has a billet inside right so it's a direct extrusion so it is being uh, pressurized from this direction and it will extrude out from this one so it says uh, a billet that has a 25 millimeter diameter Uh, this diameter would be 25 and this length would be 75 mm okay. in a direct extrusion operation with the extrusion ratio that is rx equals to 4 the extrude rate the extrude rate the thing which has been extruded from here the extrude rate has a round cross section so we have the round opening of the orifice the die angle Uh, that is a half angle is equals to 90 degree so we know that is equals to 90 degree the work metal has a strength coefficient of 415 so that is a strength coefficient equals to 415 megapascals and the strain hardening exponent of 0.18 that is 0.18 use the johnson's formula with a equals to point and b equals to 1.5 to estimate the extrusion strain now what it says determine the pressure applied to the end of the blade as the ram move forward we have to identify the pressure that is being applied if you remember the formula for the pressure in the direct extrusion when you take into consideration the friction also the complete expression for the pressure was p equals to yf that is the average flow stress into extrusion strain plus 2l by d naught 2L by D naught. So this is the length. Uh, any instantaneous length? It's any at at any instant, and we have the D naught that is the initial diameter of the uh, billet. So that is the total pressure that is used uh, that is applied in the direct extrusion. So let's start with it. First and foremost, we will find out the strain. we have the uh, ratio the extrusion ratio so we'll just directly determine the strain the true strain in this case was equals to ln of rx so that is equals to ln 4.0 so that would be equals to 1.38 So this is the value of the true strain. Right? Then we have to find out the extrusion strain that is you based on the Johnson's formula. So the extrusion strain would be equals to A plus B ln of R X. or we can write it as a plus b into true strain so that would be equals to a is 0.8 plus b is 1.5 into 1.3863 so the extrusion strain would be equals to 2.8795 
So as we know, uh, uh, now we have the extrusion strain, we have to find out the flow stress and you have discussed that the flow stress will be based on the true strain. So the flow stress here would be equals to, as it's the average flow stress, so that is equals to flow curve into true strain, exponent strain hardening divided by 1 plus strain hardening. So we have the flow curve equals to 415 into the true strain is equals to 1.3 863 exponent the strain hardening exponent and that is equal to 0 0.18 so we have 0 0.18 divided by 1 plus 0 0.18 so if you solve this one it would be equals to 373 megapascals this is the value of the flow curve uh, the flow stress and we have the value of the extrusion strain here so we have this factor now we find out this one we know the L and the D naught so it's, it's changed them the pressure applied to the end of the blade so the initial length was 75 millimeter we can select the intermediate length let's say uh, we have extruded some amount of the length of the blade now the remaining is the 50 millimeter now we have actually some more amount the remaining in the container is 25 millimeter and last uh, the theoretical value that says 0 millimeter although in reality uh, it won't happen because we have studied that even towards the end of the uh, uh, extrusion operation there will be some amount of material left within the container and that is known as that is known as but if you see the initial discussion of the extrusion process so we have to find the pressure at each of these uh, length so we have P equals to YF that is 373 into the extrusion strain that is 2.879 plus 2 into 75 by 25 so you can find out the initial length So that would be equals to 3312 megapascals at L equals to 75. You can again find out at L equals to let's say 50. So it would be again equal to 373 into 2.879 plus 2 into 50 by 25 so it would be equals to 2566 megapascals this is how we can calculate the, the pressure uh, along the whole extrusion process so towards the end of the process we have L equals to 0 so we can have 373 into 2.879 plus 2 into 0 by 25 so obviously as I said before theoretically uh, practically it's not possible we are just finding it out theoretically so we will have the value equals to that is 1074 megapascals so we have 1074 megapascals at a, a towards the end of the process so although for the direct exclusion this is not possible but uh, for the indirect one uh, this would be the pressure that is required if this process was performed indirectly obviously in the, as you had uh, as we know that in direct exclusion there is no uh, relative motion between the work part and the container so there is no friction that is present there so that's why this value can be considered as the uh, uniform pressure that is required to perform the indirect extrusion so that's all for the extrusion process now uh, we will move towards the 
next and the last type of the bulk deformation process that is the wire and the bar drawing. So what is the wire and the bar drawing? Uh, first and foremost, it's a, it's a type of the bulk deformation process and uh, uh, in this type of the process the cross section of a bar, rod or the wire is reduced. So the primary purpose is just reduce the cross section either the bar, rod or the wire by pulling it through the die. So here the, it is being performed through a pulling action. There is a tensile forces involved. While in all the other cases of the bulk deformation or the other, other cases of the bulk deformation either in the rolling operation or in the forging or in the extrusion we have the compression compressive forces that are involved here but in the case of the wire and the bar drawing we have the tensile forces involved here right so it is similar to extrusion uh, the basic scheme is like sim is similar to extrusion we have a container we have a die this hole is a die surface and uh, there is a work billet or a work stock and that is being pulled uh, that is being passed through this die open but the only difference is in the extrusion the force is being applied here but in the case of the wire and the bar drawing force is being applied it is being pulled in the extrusion it is being pushed right that is the only difference between the extrusion and the wire and bar drawing although drawing applies tensile stresses but there is a compression that plays a significant role uh, because uh, when metal passes through this die opening there is a compression in the metal uh, when passing through this die so it's not like uh, it's a completely tensile mode although the force that is being applied is a tensile in nature but the compression also plays a vital role when performing the uh, wire and the bar drawing operation so that is a basic schematic uh, so here we have the working stock or the starting stock the work material in the case of the extrusion we call that billet we have a dies if uh, as you know in the extrusion process we have a container that had some die cavity like this one in the case of the extrusion process right so in the drawing uh, we have directly die cavities we have the final stock with some change cross section with some change diameter here and there are regions within the die cavity which you will see in the next uh, few slides so uh, let's move towards certain advantages and disadvantages uh, I will not go into much detail of this bar in the bar drawing okay. so uh, the advantage of the drawing it has a good dimensional control like in the case of the extrusion process because we have the metallic dies we have the close we are capable to produce close tolerance because of this good dimensional control we have a good surface finish as well there is enhanced mechanical properties such as strength and hardness and why is that so again due to strain hardening and I expect you to know what the strain hardening is because we have discussed this time and again in this whole chapter in every process uh, strain hardening has a vital role to play uh, drawing speed can be as high as 50 meter per second so it can be a very high speed process as well uh, but that's not always the case uh, in the case of fine wires we can have a speed up to this otherwise uh, it's uh, at least slower than this one so these are certain advantages for the drawing operation what is the difference between the wire and the bar drawing in the previous process we have only one name either rolling or the forging or the extrusion but in this case we have uh, two names for the same process wire and the bar drawing so because there is a certain difference between them uh, based on the machine and based on some parameters although the basic uh, process is same so the difference between is that the bar is uh, somewhat a large diameter uh, stock with a larger diameter either bar or the rod while if we discuss if we call it a wire we have a small diameter such as it ranges uh, down to 0 0.03 millimeter so if you have a smaller diameter we call it to be a wire drawing if you have a larger diameter stock we call it to a uh, bar drawing and because of the change in diameter we have a change in the machines that are used for these two processes it says, as it says the mechanics are the same 
the method equipment and even terminologies are different for this one although they both have same pulling mechanism from the die opening but the machines that are involved here and some other terms uh, that are used to understand this uh, process are different so what is what are the drawing practices it is usually performed as a cold working operation in the previous processes like in the rolling forging and extrusion they can be performed uh, in both ways the hot working and the cold working because our uh, primary concern was both either to change the significant either to significant significantly plastic really deform that material or cause significant shape change or we can have a purpose of increasing the strength of the material but in the case of the drawing uh, there is not much change in the dimensions although we do change but it's not so big so that's why it is mostly performed as the cold working operation so we get that increase in strength as an advantage of the drawing process and it is mostly used for the round cross sections common products our electrical wires that are performed that are manufactured using the drawing operation uh, rail tracks in the uh, railways that is also uh, made from the drawing operation uh, we have certain bar stocks which are further machined and forged to get the final products springs that are used the rivets they all are some examples for the uh, drawing operation so what the actually the bar drawing is we will first go through the bar drawing then we will move towards the wire drawing so in the case of the bar drawing uh, it is accomplished as a, as a single draft operation you know what the draft was in the case of as you know remember in the case of the rolling the draft was initial thickness minus the final thickness it means that whatever we achieve in a single pass whatever we achieve in a single pass that's how we used to find out the draft initially to find out the capability of our mill so draft was whatever we are achieving or changing the dimension in a single pass so it is performed as a single draft operation means the bar drawing will always have a single pass it, is a, it will pass only one time that's it the stock is pulled through one die opening so we have a one die uh, and we have a bar and there is a carriage that is pulling this bar using some hydraulic system and uh, the bar is being pulled through this die opening only once so that is what is called as a single draft operation so the beginning stock has a larger diameter and is a straight cylinder as you can see here uh, so this uh, basic scheme of the bar drawing necessitates the batch type product operation as you know the batch type operation when we make a batch of uh, same dimension products some like we make thousand bars of uh, same dimension in length so this type of uh, it necessitates a batch type production so if you see this bar drawing table we have the entry table this one we have a carriage that is pulling it is pulling the stock behind this carriage we have a hydraulic system that is powering this carriage we have the draw bars our work material we have the die stand which contains the dies and this is the die and there is some here at this point there is some lubrication also right uh, at the entry side not at this point toward this entry side when it's entering into the die cavity there is some lubrication as well right so this is the basic scheme for the uh, bar drawing operation if you see the wire drawing it has a slight change because it's a wire drawing so that was a single draft operation it is only performed in a single go while the wire drawing is a continuous drawing operation that we have a long uh, we can stock of the wires and that is being continuously deformed in the drawing operation so that is called the continuous drawing it is being performed continuously consisting of a multiple draw die so we don't have a single die like in the case of the bar drawing we have a single wire is passing to first die then it is again passing to second die and so on and so forth so we progressively reduce the diameter of the wire drawing of the wires because in the case of the wire drawing we have to achieve a very small diameter so we don't do it all at once 
we do it progressively uh, passing through first die and then, then the second die and so on and so forth based on our requirement so we have uh, multiple draw dice typically it range from 4 to 12 so these draw dice might range from 4 or to, or to up to 12 so and these dies they are separated by accumulating drums that are known as the capstan drum so these die pairs are separated by this accumulating drums accumulating drums which are accumulating the wire so the name of this accumulating drum is the capstan drum right so what is the purpose of the capstan drum uh, the first as you can see here that it is uh, holding the wire it is storing the wire so we can have the continuous supply of the wire and second one is that you might assume that okay we can have a single drum to store a wire why we have a caption drum after each draw die the purpose is that uh, it's not only storing the wire for continuous supply it is also uh, keeping it in a stretched position so that the wire should be stretched always it shouldn't be like the wire is going like this right so it should always be stretched and straight so there is no distortion in the uh, while performing the drawing operation Right. then we have as you can see here uh, before this die cavity this is our dice production and diameter before this die the wire is passing through this lubricant so it is being lubricated before entering into the die region so each die provides a small reduction so desired total reduction is achieved by the series of dice as we have already discussed we have series of dice so they progressively reduce the diameter of the wire there is a process uh, that is called annealing so the annealing is sometime required before uh, between the dice so there might be chance that between two dice there is an annealing process what is annealing? annealing is a heat treatment process if you remember we have discussed briefly in the first chapter in the beginning of our subject that there is a process called a heat treatment process and the purpose of the heat treatment process is to not to change the shape but to change the properties so what annealing particularly is annealing is a softening process it is a, it is a softening process so we perform the annealing between, between the two dies so that our wire becomes soft and it can be easily deformed right so it heats the material up to recrystallization temperature and you know what the recrystallization temperature is so it heat the material up to that temperature and allow it to cool down in the air in the open air without any external medium like water or some other source so we are allowed to cool down in the air so that's called the annealing operation the purpose is to soften the material so that it can be easily deformed in this way so now we know uh, the difference between the bar and the wire drawing bar drawing is a single batch operation while the wire drawing is a continuous drawing operation in the bar drawing uh, the material is passed through a single die while in the case of the wire drawing we have multiple dies that range from 4 to 12 so and we have another feature here that is called the accumulating capstan drum which accumulate the wire and also keep the wire in the stretch form in the tension so that there is no distortion here and we perform the annealing uh, before the wire drawing operation or in between the dies also so these were some differences between the wire and the bar drawing so let's jump towards certain features of the die cavity itself if we closely observe the die cavity we have certain region the first one is the entry region what it does it funnels the lubricant into die cavity as we have seen in the previous figure we have a lubricant you can see the pink one we have the lubricant before this die cavity so the purpose of the entry region here the purpose of the entry region here it funnels the lubricant into the die cavity so it can flow into the die cavity then we have the approach region the longest one it's a cone shaped region we are drawing actually okay. so the this approach region is mainly responsible for reducing the diameter of uh, the wire or the bar then we have the back relief region right. we have the back relief region 
so uh, back relief leisure is the exit zone so provide with a back relief angle of, of about 30 degrees so this angle is about 30 degrees so that if there is a spring back phenomenon means uh, as you know the metals are elastic in nature so once they are deformed they try to regain its shape uh, so this provides a relief and it provides some space for metal to regain its shape to expand again then there is another uh, area that is called the bearing surface this region this region that is called the bearing surface so bearing surface determines the final diameter it, it determines the final diameter or the final dimensions you can see so these are certain features of the uh, broad eyes so uh, before performing the drawing operation there is a preparation of work that is uh, we prepare the prepare the material before the dyeing operation the first one is the annealing as we have already discussed uh, the purpose of the annealing is to increase ductility or to soften the material then we have cleaning to prevent damage to work surface and draw dyes so we clean the surface of the dyes as well as the work part so there are no oxides on the surface that end up damaging the surface of the material or the dye and the pointing the, uh, as we know the die or the wire is like uh, flat from the beginning so we create some pointed surface like this one so uh, once we have the die region like this one so these draw dies can be uh, these wire or the bar can be easily fed into the die cavity if we have like this one so it will uh, stuck here so we create a pointer so that once it passes here then this can be uh, caught by the carriage and pull it right as we have seen in the previous slides of the wire drawing in this one so we simply make it pointed from the beginning and we insert into the die cavity so that carriage can easily hold that and apply the tensile force or pull it through the die cavity. Last, we have a short analysis for the wire and the bar drawing operation. So, as we know, uh, it's a reduction process. So we have certain parameters uh, in the drawing operation. The first and foremost is the reduction ratio. We have the reduction ratio that is equals to initial area minus final area divided by the initial area, right? And obviously we mean the cross section area here then we have the draft we had the draft in the rolling operation also we have the draft in the drawing operation also that is in the rolling operation that was equals to initial thickness minus final final thickness because we are reducing thickness in that operation in this operation we are reducing the diameter so we have the initial diameter minus the final diameter so this is the draft again uh, we have the extrusion here uh, the strain sorry strain here the value of strain would be equals to natural log of initial area divided by the final cross section area and based on this strain the stress required would be equals to flow stress under the strain so that flow stress and it will be the average average flow stress because there is no impact load involved in the drawing operation rather we are applying the pressure uh, or the force over the long period of time so we have the yf into ln of e naught by af so we won't go into much details for the drawing operation we will just stick uh, to here you know the how to calculate the strain how to calculate the draft and the reduction ratio then towards the end of the chapter there are some specialized drawing operation that is known as the tube drawing 
so the purpose of the tube drawing uh, is not only to reduce the diameter of the hollow tubes but also to control the wall thickness also to control the wall thickness here so it can be reduced used to directly reduce the diameter like this but to control the uh, inner wall thickness especially for the seamless pipe for the seamless pipes and tubes so we can have a thing called the mandrel as you can see here the mandrel and another thing is called the plug so they both are used when we not only want to reduce the diameter but we also want to control the uh, wall thickness so what is a mandrel? mandrel is a, a supported mandrel is a supported uh, a metallic plug you can say uh, so we can have it in between the die in the, at the bearing surface of the die so the remaining uh, opening would be the thickness of the uh, tube so this is how we can reduce the thickness of the tube whatever we want to reduce so but what if if you have the very long pipe so we cannot have a very long support for the mandrel so for that we enter a plug a floating plug into the pipe so once uh, this plug gets stuck into this bearing surface so the remaining opening would be the die open, the, the thickness of the wall so this is how we can reduce the thickness of the wall by using a floating plug for the longer pipe uh, floating plug for for long pipe tube we can have the mandrel for pipes and tubes right so these are two specialized operation for the drawing operation so that's all for the bulk deformation process and it's also the end of the chapter number 19 uh, in this chapter we have discussed the rolling we perform analysis and the local problems we discuss the forging and its types and the extrusion as well as the wire and the bar drawing so in the, in the coming live session uh, i will try to uh, make a chart for you to summarize all these four chapter all these all these four processes in a single page so that you can easily uh, remember each and every, every aspect of the process so uh, in the next lecture we will be starting chapter number 20 that is a second type of metal forming process uh, that is sheet metal process assalamu alaikum